Good morning and welcome to our live broadcast at First Presbyterian Church. It is a joy to come into your home today with good news about God who loves you. We are located in beautiful Uptown Columbus on the corner of 11th and 1st. We would love for you to join us for worship or just stop by and say hello. At First Presbyterian Church, we welcome you with grace and gratitude for God's love. Invite those who are able to please stand for our call to worship. And you, O Lord, are our strength and our shield. And you alone, O Lord, are holy. And you alone are perfect love. And you alone are perfect truth. And you alone, O Lord, are worthy of our praise. Let us worship God.
as we have just sung, our Lord is full of compassion and merciful. His anger slow to rise, and yet we are so unworthy of this. We were born into a sinful world and have taken on the sinful ways of this world. Let us go to God and confess with the knowledge that if we confess, our sins will be forgiven. Merciful God, You pardon all who truly repent and turn to You. We humbly confess our sins and ask Your mercy. We have not loved You with a pure heart, nor have we loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have not done justice, love kindness, or walked humbly with You, our God. Have mercy on us, O God, in Your loving kindness. In Your great compassion, cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Do not cast us from Your presence or take Your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of Your salvation and sustain us with Your bountiful Spirit. It is never too late to be forgiven. As Jesus Christ was on the cross between two thieves, one of those two thieves did admit his guilt, that his punishment was deserved and that God is to be feared. His reward, he did spend paradise with Jesus, spend his time in paradise with Jesus. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> well, as you can see, we have a little bit different form this morning because we have a wonderful surprise prepared for you. For many, uh, many of you know that we had BBS last week, Vacation Bible School, where we learned all about God's power and strength. It was a fabulous week. I encourage you to look outside in the gathering hall at the uh, the prayer. Um, Hello, Tom. The, the prayers that the kids created, they are absolutely beautiful and so pure and wonderful. The halls were filled with noise and laughter and joy and fabulous energy, and it was just fantastic. We ended the week with a climbing wall, and they all learned how to climb to the top and ring the bell, so it was just, it was fabulous. So we'd like to share one of our uh, selections with you today so that they can talk about how to conquer challenge with God's mighty power.
Thank you all. Thanks to everybody who participated, all of the volunteers. You guys were amazing. We can't do it without you. I'm going to take these guys up to Children's Church, but we're going to say a prayer really quick. So let's bow our heads. All right. Three, two, one. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for a fabulous VBS week. Thank you so much for everyone that helped and lended their time and talents. Lord, thank you for these children and their wonderful spirit, how it renewed our love and joy and happiness in this building, just to have them running through. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience, and we know that it all happens because of you. Help us to continue to feel that momentum and excitement as we carry on the summer and enjoy learning and loving and growing together. In Christ's name, amen. All right, let's go. Yes, uh, thank you, children. I uh, want to welcome everybody here in worship and ask you to assign the attendance pads, um, pass it back to its point of origin, at the end of your pew, and uh, following the worship service, be sure and extend that right hand of fellowship. I want to greet those who are worshiping with us at Spring Harbor. You might be worshiping at your home, a hospital room. Uh, for those gathered in LaGrange, here's that shout out you asked for, uh, as well as those that might be in Pine Mountain watching us and elsewhere. Uh, TiVo, whenever, we welcome you to our worship service today. Uh, again, there's several announcements I want to highlight. Uh, one is a uh, of course, just had Vacation Bible School, grateful for that. Another v VIP coming up at the end of the month. Got another opportunity in August. Um, sign up, so still some options, some openings are still there. If you feel called to serve, encourage you to do just that. Uh, on this Wednesday, June 10th, as a church family supper, kind of where we are and where we are going. And it's going to be some good basic information meeting. We'll have representatives from Evaluation and Planning, the Interim Pastor Search Committee, uh, the Mission Ministry Team, Mission and Evangelism Ministry Team, and you'll get a story behind that. Uh, the Education, uh, Personnel, Worship, Stewardship, and Finance. Uh, some news updates, a bit longer than others, but nevertheless, a place to learn the latest, ask a few questions, and if they don't have the answer, they can get back to you. But anyway, that's coming up on June 10th as our church family supper reunion. Uh, later this month on the 18th, there's a good uh, day trip uh, to the, the White Oak Pasture Farm. That information is also in the bulletin. And also during the summer, there'll be a combined children's Sunday school class. And the all-adult class is meeting in the parlor. And we are going through this first part of this series, uh, John Ortberg. We did it on Wednesdays uh, this past fall. When it's all over, it goes back in the box. So I encourage you for the app option as well. I want to thank Elder Jimmy Moy, who is serving as worship as liturgist this morning. And our plan is, our hope is, in the Sundays ahead, that uh, we'll always have an elder up here. Uh, there may be, he's got a big part today. Some Sundays the part will be bigger, some it will be smaller. But in the weeks ahead, I hope to always have an elder up here to help. And so I thank you very much uh, for your work with that. So let us pause as he walks up here and uh, hear our first lesson. Thank you, Jones. In 2 Timothy, Paul charges Timothy as follows. All scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work, so that we may be equipped by the reading of scripture. Let us first go to God in prayer. Blessed Lord, who causes all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast to the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The first reading of scripture is from... Philippians chapter 4, beginning at verse 4. All who are able, please stand for the reading. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. 
The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Now I invite those who are able to please stand for our second lesson. It's in Matthew's Gospel. We return to a section from the Sermon on the Mount. In the 25th verse, listen now to the Word of God. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your lifespan? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I tell you, even in Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, 
will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it's the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. As I prepared for today's message, I realized that the last time I preached from this pulpit was April 12th, eight weeks ago. And y'all, a lot's happened over the last eight weeks. I mean, there's an elephant, okay? It's over there. It's not an Alabama elephant either. For those of you Auburn folks out there, don't worry. It's just an elephant, okay? It's here. We know it, all right? (laughs) Eight weeks ago, and a lot has happened since then. And as I prepared for the message today, I thought about who would be sitting out there and who is watching um, wherever you are that has followed the news. And that some of you here today are angry. You're angry at an individual or a group of individuals. You may just be angry in general. And some of you are confused or sad or bewildered or mildly depressed. Some of you have quite a mixture of nostalgia, anger, and resentment. And there may be a few other emotions I haven't covered yet in that list. And for some gathered here today, there's so much going on in your own world, so much in your own plate that has you occupied that, I mean, mean, yes, you're you're aware of the last eight weeks and, and you're concerned, but there's so much on your own plate that to a degree, what has happened doesn't really amount to a hill of beans. Your prayer today is, Lord, meet me where I am now in my situation. So today, let us look at the Word of the Lord as we stay with our series on the Sermon of the Mount, and we're going to revisit a text that we recently covered. I want to pull out one nugget from that sermon, and that Sermon on the Mount, and lay it aside, an insight from Philippians. From the Sermon on the Mount, I want to pull out this piece. But strive first for the kingdom of God and His righteousness, Do not worry about tomorrow. And then next to that, these words from Philippians. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Pray with thanksgiving. Do not worry. Do not worry. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Well, that's how I first learned that passage, and that, yeah, some of y'all are nodding, yep, that's how you learned it too, okay, the, that kind of phrasing. Do not worry, pray, seek ye first. Here in the New Revised Standard, it's rendered as worry, but I learned in both these passages, I first learned it as anxious, and that word, that word in Greek could also mean anxious or to fret, or I might say in our modern language to stress out about. And it says, do not worry. Now, wait a minute. For those of you who know me, you're saying, do not worry. And we know you, Jones. Do not worry. Are you crazy? Well, yes, I am. I come from a long line of crazy people. But that's besides the point. Do not worry. Jones, are you being just a little bit of a hypocrite? Well, yes, I am, okay? (laughs) But I need this word just as much as anybody else needs it. I am prone to worry. Several years ago, I shared a sermon, I mean, a sermon I did about worry, and I shared as an example, I talked about my Dayminder. 
where I keep, of course, what's happening, meetings I've got coming up, anniversaries and birthdays and landmark dates. And I, I said, if you want to really you know, stress me out, um, hide it or something like that, this is the one for 2016. Now, I have in my calendar, by the second Monday in June, I need to buy the following year. I just couldn't help myself, and it was already there, available at the store, and I literally got excited. I mean, I got excited, okay? <laughs> I got 2016, already put in a few dates. This is 2015, and back late February, the nightmare of my life happened. I misplaced it. I mean, that one is gone, too. After a two, three, and I felt like I was in a fog for two or three weeks. What am I supposed to do? I just went to the store and got another one, and I filled in the dates uh, and those landmarks and had to reconstruct through some emails, some appointments and things that were, 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 were there. And, uh, but I put it all together, and you might wonder, gosh, Jones, that was a lot. How did you do that? Well, very simple, and I'll go ahead and admit it, Mary Lee. I've got these going back to 1989. I'm not depiling those either, okay, so just don't even go there. The other example I gave, I talked about childhood, and I said that my parents never made me read the Bible. There was one book that they said, besides your assigned reading, there was one book they said, Jones, you are going to read this book. And it is the power of positive thinking for young people. This is circa 1955. I won't tell you what year, but it was my mother's birthday gift in 1955. And uh, yeah, some of y'all, that's exactly how you dressed. I, I know, your, know your birth date, okay? Oh, and I was Bennett's age, and that's what's so scary when I think about it. But I can hear it now. Jones, you're going to have ulcers before you're 12. You are worrying so much. And so, again, I understand this passage and the challenge. Do not worry. It is something that I do by nature. But first, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. First you pray. Several times this past week, I've been asked, what do you do, Jones? And I've said, the first thing you do is pray. And then come and hear me preach on Sunday because I'm not going to give that sermon in advance. You've got to come and hear it today. The first thing you do is that. And I don't mean prayer as some sort of wimpy, cop-out, milk-toast, mindless kind of activity to do. It's a very active, positive saying, Lord, this is the situation. This is where I am. We pray and bring our requests to God. God has spoken to us through His Word. We respond with prayer and we say, Lord, what next? in my life, for this church. Heal me, Lord. Heal our church. It's a prayer that can be very honest as saying, Lord, I will be honest with you. I hate this person right now. Or, Lord, I'll be honest with you. I'm angry. Oh, Lord, I'll be honest. I am bewildered. Oh, Lord, I'll be honest. I'm seeking action points. What is that next step? And make your requests be made known to God with thanksgiving. A grateful acknowledgement of past mercies, as well as seeking that future direction. We're giving thanks for what has happened, grateful remembrance, as well as looking forward, future, with our requests. The word in Greek, Eucharisti, from which the word Eucharist comes, and some particular those in the Catholic background may remember, ah, oh, Eucharist, communion, the Lord's Supper. In the Lord's Supper, we remember and we give thanks. Now, at the 845 worship service, what we do the first Sunday of each month, not in May because that's Youth Sunday, but we have communion. And you know what we did at 845? We had communion just like we do each first Sunday of the month. We remembered and we gave thanks, like we do every first Sunday. And then it says, The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And the word guard, it's a Greek word. The image is a military image, not surprisingly. 
It's picturing soldiers standing on guard duty and refers to the guarding of a city gate from within as a control on all who want out. Make your request known, and then the peace of God will guard your hearts. And imagine the peace of God guarding like a ranger battalion. Some of you are familiar with Eugene Peterson. He wrote The Message. Some of you may have a copy of The Message or hear people refer to it. He's written a variety of books, and there's one that came out uh, maybe late 80s, Working the Angles, particularly appreciated by pastors and the topics that he talks about. He had an interesting piece to talk about prayer and the role that it's meant to take in a community of faith. And he drew on some work from of all people and of all subjects, a Norwegian anthropologist named Sigmund Moenkel. And he had done a study of the ancient Teutonic tribes, and these are the forerunners of Germans and Anglo-Saxons and Scandinavians, of their worship practices about the time that paralleled when the Psalms were compiled, put together, some written later, but kind of that general period. And so looking, at, eventually looking at the study habits of the Hebrews along with these Teutonic tribes. Now mind you, they worship their own set of gods, okay? So it's, it's, it's pre-Christian, non-Christian, completely different, but saw some parallels looking at their worship material and that of the Psalms, which again is the prayer book and the hymn book of the people. I mean, our first hymn came from one of the Psalms, okay? And it was noticed how central prayer was in this community, these Teutonic tribes, okay? So they have no knowledge of Adam and Eve or anything like that. But it said the role of the community at prayer was formative in everything else that took place. When the people gathered to join their prayers in an act of worship, this act was neither haphazard nor peripheral. It was dramatic and basic. It embraced the whole of the society in its powerful grip, molding ideas, instructing values, and acting as a cement to bind the community together. The prayers of the people were the most important things that they did. The prayers were deeply personal in their impact and stamped the life of the community in its history and its culture. Prayer was not an afterthought. That was what got everything launched. Everything came back to that time first of prayer. Prayer was a discipline for the people, like a workout, like a training exercise. I came across this quote just this morning, so I hope I got it down just right, where this ancient Greek gentleman said, we do not rise to our expectations, we arrive at the level of our training. So when we first come together as a community in prayer, we're coming for training. And then, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Now it could take an entire year of sermons to unpack the meaning, but basically it says, what is the kingdom work in front of us, at least in what we know to do, and go from there. Now, we've had a perfect example with Vacation Bible School this past week. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. If we had had 50 kids, I would have been happy. I would have, I would have been celebrating it here with you all this morning if we had had 50 kids. And talk to Kelly, and you said, I think you're praying for 100 kids to show up. We had 110 sign up for Vacation Bible School. Doubled my faith right there. Dare I say it, there was even a question mark, should we do it or not? And 110 children showed up. A question mark about the volunteers to be available to, to make all of this happen. And I uh, was talking, again, to Kelly on Wednesday, because I was working on the sermon, I was going to work this in there. After that first day, I knew, yep, it's going in, it's going in. But uh, I said, what kind of adult volunteers do you have? And I don't even remember that moment. And you said, ah, oh, 40, 50, we got this covered. Now, 
September will mark 22 years of ordination. 22 years I've been involved with Vacation Bible School, okay, one way or the other. In fact, my first day on the job in Virginia was VBS at one of the churches. So I've been in the soup of VBS for years now. And on a Wednesday, for the director, to quite frankly, that cocky as you were, <laughs> kind of dangerous actually, <laughs> that says a lot. I got this covered. Okay, kingdom work, it's maybe a small piece, but that's a step that you do. At the end of this month, we have VIP. Slots are already filled, if you'll see, but there are some available ways that you can be serving. Uh, I'll get a shameless uh, plug for that event. Uh, also in August, if you miss this month, there's always another month, uh, another time that you can serve, and then we have one even further into the fall. Um, you got any questions? There's Margie Bickerstaff right over there, so be more than happy. <laughs> <laughs> to take your name and uh, sign you up for that. That's some basic kingdom work that we know needs to be done, okay? That's something right there, an example. You begin to look for options and um, begin to find out what are we doing now and where are we going. So again, let me give you a shameless plug for our Wednesday night supper on June 10th. We're going to talk about this is where we are. These are some steps that we're taking. These are some question marks that we have in front of us right now, but we're going to figure those out too, bit by bit. We go forward one step at a time. A story that's often been told is of this woman who got um, news, bad news from co-workers of her husband that he had been killed in an accident at work. And then she did the most puzzling thing. She went to the closet and pulled out her broom and began to sweep. And they asked, what, what's going on? And she said, well, my mother said, when you don't know what to do next, do something that you know you need to do. And people will be coming to see me. And I want to get this room tidied, and I need to get the tea ready to receive my guests. So as she tried to figure out the world of widowhood, there were some things that she knew she needed to do, and she went about that work. We pray with thanksgiving, and we make a request known to God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And as one person said, if we are faithful doing what we know we need to do, God will be faithful to show us what we do not know to do at the moment. Now this is really countercultural because we live in such an instant society. I mean, you've heard the old story about the person who gets in front of the microwave and says, hurry up, hurry up. You know, I have made car payments online like that. Why even bother looking at your checkbook? Just go online, see what you got. Then you look at your checkbook, okay, those checks have not cleared, that gives me a good amount of money. Yes, I can write the check. No, better wait to the next pay period, okay? Like that. You don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you have even just gone online, you've ordered a gift, you've had it shipped to the person, I mean, within about five minutes, if you, especially if you knew what you wanted to get them, you've done that shopping. We're in a culture, and it's convenient, we all love it, but we're in a culture where we are more than ever used to instant gratification. And while it's convenient for certain things, that's not the way real life really works. Things take time. You plant a seed in the ground, and then you've got flowers like this, okay? These are beautiful flowers too, by the way, but they weren't, you know, just didn't snap the finger and the flowers popped out. An acorn is planted, and over time you have an oak tree. Apple trees are planted, and it's going to be years before anybody can really enjoy the fruit of those. I mean, every PhD began in kindergarten and wasn't doing calculus in first grade. I don't care how smart they want to accelerate things today. Have yet to see that. It takes time. And this process to figure out what happens next, it's going to take time. 
I don't want to bust anybody's bubble, but you know, we come back here next Sunday, we're not going to have the perfect plan in place. Let me just tell you that, okay? June 10th will not answer every question automatically, okay? But bit by bit, doing the things that we know to do, you go forward and other answers come in due course. Do the things that you know you need to do. This past week, I came across a paper that a friend of mine, Glenn Bill, wrote. He's a pastor now serving in uh, Sarasota, Florida. So here's a shout out to you, Glenn, because I'm going to send him the clip on YouTube, okay? But it's a paper that he wrote to people coping during times of great transition and change. And there were three particular rules uh, that he gave that I thought were very good, and so I want to i go through them right here. The first one was this. Resist the rush to judgment and embrace a holy uncertainty. When the way is darkest, give the future the benefit of the doubt. Wait and trust God for renewed sense of perspective. I love this one right here too. When the way is darkest, give the future the benefit of the doubt. Wait and trust God for renewed sense of perspective. And then number two, God redeems and preserves even when we least expect it. Hold fast to the foundations of grace. That's one line here bears repeating. God redeems and preserves even when we least expect it. Hold fast to the foundations of grace, and one of those gifts of grace that God gives us is prayer. I'm going to take us right back to that point one way or the other in this message. And number three, remember that God honors long obedience more than empty promises and outward changes. And I pondered that one, and this just image came to mind. Okay, a person's kind of going through a lull in life and says, ah, I know what I need to do. I'll get a facelift. And that person gets a facelift. And after a couple of weeks of enjoying, you know, a a few less wrinkles, that person is still that person. And if something's not right in that person's life, no facelift or liposuction or whatever technique is out there is going to take care of what's inside. But the long obedience of doing what is right, will. Do not worry about tomorrow. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of Jesus Christ will guard you, will guard us. I began with a prayer, talking about prayer, and I'm going to end with a prayer. But I need to see to set it up. There's two ladies that work together. Um, Nay Bailey wrote this book, Faith is Not a Feeling. It's, I've had it for 30 years, over 30 years now, and it's falling apart. I go back to it so often. And she was on staff with Campus Crusade. Um, She kind of had a job. They enlarged the job so that two people would do it. And they, I mean, there were two people working together, she and this woman named Jean, and they were co-workers. Uh, they thought, we're doing this together. Let's just go ahead and be roommates too. And so they got an apartment and were based in Dallas. But it became pretty obvious that even though they had the same theology, even though they were both walking with the Lord, they were just wired very differently. Nay says that she's always been the kind of person who majored more in people than in her studies in high school and college. The extrovert, um, constantly, oh, come, let's get together and have coffee. And I can imagine her at Iron Bank, just nine to five at Iron Bank, one person after the other, and absolutely loving all times that she had. Very outgoing. Jean was a very gifted person, but often because of her gifts, she'd be in a situation that she soon was in leadership and had not established any peer relationships and had really been a loner for most of her life and very self-controlled, kind of tight inside. 
Uh, and the two women just didn't really butt heads, but it could just be tense. I uh, said, Nay would, in the morning, brought her coffee because she said, well, my parent, my father, always brought my mother coffee in bed, 40 plus years of marriage. And so she would do that for a roommate. And her roommate stressed out because, oh, I should have thought of that first. There's something wrong with me. You know, y'all kind of get in a picture. Well, they roomed together for three years and they were determined to make it work. At one point early on, there was a, a moment just feeling tense. Again, no real fallouts with one another. And not knowing what to do, simply said, Jean said, why don't we pray? And so they prayed. And I want to leave you all with this prayer. Lord, we don't particularly feel like praying, but here we are. And your word says that we should always pray and not faint. And we feel like fainting, so we'd better pray. Your word also says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. And so while we are in this, we choose with our wills to thank you for what we are going through together, even though we don't fully understand our struggles. Thank you for your promise that all things, including this, will work together for good to those who love you, and we do, and who are called according to your purpose, and we are. And you've also said that in you there is no darkness at all, and so we ask you to shed light on our paths and give us wisdom and understanding. We claim your victory over Satan in our lives, and we pray for the oneness you want us to have. And Lord, your word says that we are in the process of being conformed to the image of Christ. And we ask you now not to stop with us until you are finished. And even though it is painful, we want you to carry on your work in our lives to accomplish your purpose. Do not worry about tomorrow. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Amen. Let us stand and now say what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And let us pray. Almighty, gracious, and loving God, we pray today for wholeness. We pray for wholeness in our walk with you. Help us to remember that your love is unconditional. May we grow in your grace. And as your children, may we speak the truth and love to one another. And may we seek to build up and encourage each other. We pray for healing. We pray for those who are sick, for those who are grieving. We pray for those facing disappointment. We pray for those who need to heal on the inside. And Lord, you know our needs in these areas. Hear our prayers for ourselves. May we be open to your healing hand in our lives. For Lord Jesus, you are the great physician. And we pray for hope. During these days, we need hope that does not disappoint. 
We pray for hope in the midst of our doubts. We pray for hope in the eternal value of what we are doing, lessons taught and learned, and the numerous small details we handle for mission and programs, for service done here and in the community. We pray that it matters. We pray for those who too often see a harsh side of this world, those in our armed forces, and those who patrol our streets. Holy Spirit, send us out in hope. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue our worship as we present to God our tithes, our offerings, our gifts, and our very selves. Heavenly Father, your generosity to us is immeasurable. We humbly return to you a portion of that generosity in gratitude and with the sure knowledge that you will bless, multiply, and use this offering for your kingdom on earth. Amen.
shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. And what does God require of us but to do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God? And now may the love of God our Father and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, both now and forevermore. Amen.